What is up, Phoenix family? I'm Ross Cessna, your effervescent and omnipresent host. We're about to go on an esoteric and occult odyssey. This isn't the designer spirituality that is polluting pop culture. It's your opportunity to explore age-old wisdom in the raw. With no further delay, I present to you the Spiritual Phoenix Podcast. All right, welcome everybody. We have uh, Michael Boyle with us coming back. Michael, what's up, man? All good. Really glad to be to be back. Back on. Long time listener, second time caller. Maybe that'll oh, make wow. a joke every time. Uh, yeah. you know. <laughs> You're moving on up in the world, man. Right. Um, so you and Katie and I uh, had discussed kind of talking about curiosity and breaking it up into separate segments. So this is our first segment with you. Um, I'm going to do my best to keep this on curiosity in general and not delve into what our second topic would be, which is kind of the dark side of curiosity. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I guess my first question for you would be, what does curiosity mean to you? Well, it's interesting what you just said about keep trying to keep it on the straight and narrow, because for me, that's actually exactly what curiosity kind of like works against or it's kind of the antithesis of, of, of uh, curiosity for me curiosity so my kind of foundation and it was well in kind of esoteric philosophy has been in the tarot and like understanding that as like a complete system has like really like you know it was like a huge deal for me to like understand the whole you know the whole um, kind of experience of reality and for me the card in the tarot that really like signifies curiosity the most is the high priestess the high priestess has got this, like, for me, this really strong, like, um, like follow the white rabbit kind of vibe. You know, generally speaking, it's always really, um, like, mysterious. There's, like, loads of, like, symbols and stuff. It's almost like there's something that you're shown. For me, the high priestess is about like, something that you're shown that then leads you to put in the work. It's like you'll get the question but not the answer. So it's usually, like, you'll get shown something and then you'll be like, oh, my God, there's so much to understand here. I better get working and... Uh, and, you know, just like keep digging and then eventually I'll get to understand it. But, you know, as with any kind of um, like symbol, you're never really going to understand like what it really means. What you're really going to get is like an aggregate of different ideas you know, pulled together to to make like the an understanding that may not be like the understanding. Um, hmm. So when I say curiosity kind of is like the starting point that you go from that eventually to experience, it's like it draws you in. Um, or it, it lets you allow yourself to be drawn in. I don't know if that's like enough, like passive voice in that sentence. But, uh, uh, dude, I'm, I'm not like wordscaping or like running a, a passive <laughs> voice check on what you're saying. So I think, I think we're good on that. Um, it's interesting you said the high priestess though, um, because I'm, I'm literally curious as to why that was your choice and not the fool. Because for me, the fool is like the summary of, curiosity even the numerology behind it being zero the cosmic egg and like the openness of it the inf infinite potentiality kind of the uh blind wanderlust into the unknown and i'm not saying that you're wrong i just think that that was an interesting choice that was like what comes to mind for you mm. well for me the, the fool is it's got a lot to do with um like possibilities and it's got a lot to do with going forward but as the fool it's got this kind of like um Kind of these connotations of like being kind of like bumbling, like a kind of bumbling flow, just kind of like going forward and just like without really a plan, just like kind of like rambling around and just exploring or whatever. Whereas the the high priestess is is more to do with like it's more of a deliberate. It's like that feeling of like like seeing an open door. You know what I mean? It's like an open because like even behind her, generally there's this uh, uh, what do you say like a sheet, not a sheet, like a I don't know some kind of tapestry or something. But it's almost like it's like falling down a little bit and you're kind of like, oh yeah, like what's, what's behind there? Hey, you know, and, um, in, in a lot of decks you get like justice. Um, the one I use the most, which is the modern spellcaster tarot, the justice card is almost like on the other side because it's got white and black pillars, but they're reversed. So it's hmm. almost like it was on the other side, which of course 11 is like two numerology. So like mm -hmm. justice is kind of the same thing, but about the numerology as well, for me, like the, uh, like if one is like the seed of an idea, like two is when you take the first steps, like what is the beginning of a 
conversation. You know, like do it's like when you you kind of start to make things happen, um, and then of course like when you go from when you take that first step, it's like you've then got two points. And number two, then you take that first step, but you can't have two points in space without three. You know, because you can divide any this three. So that's what I kind of mean it numerological in a, in a numerological sense that 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 curiosity that led you to like take a step is like the experience and now you've like created a number three which is like a real thing you know in this case an experience so. hmm it's interesting because i've kind of gone through all the tarot cards on on episodes lately with uh, mm -hmm. a deck creator and i never heard that uh understanding of the numerology and i'm not saying you're wrong because it's all subjective and there's different ways to approach it um, but I find that interesting. I also think it's interesting um, that like the fool has still that negative connotation because for me, like the fool has kind of shed the whole concept of being bumbling or being um, any anything negative associated with it. It's more of just kind of an openness and an eagerness and a zest for life. So that's always interesting to hear how different um, how different how people perceive those things differently. But I, I would agree that kind of at a certain point in your quest for knowledge, you begin to like pull up these threads and then each thread that you pull other threads kind of come off and then you decide where, what to pull next. Um, I guess my next question would be for this. What was the kind of first thing that led you to explore esoteric stuff, spirituality or occult or magic or any of that? What was your starting um, point? Well, so for me, actually, interesting because for me, um, I wrote a, an essay like a while ago. Probably not, I don't know, it's probably pretty short, but uh, it's about uh, what esotericism really is, and I, I kind of, kind of uh, put it in a way that it's like the, the the unturned stone, like beneath the unturned stone. So you know, like we keep looking. You know, it's all about like being like drawn into investigating more and more, and eventually start getting closer and closer to kind of the truth, like whatever that is. You know, that it's like the kind of common thread of all. You know, everything you know all arts like cooking or whatever you can get the same kind of wisdom from cooking as you can from i don't know tyro you know like if you kind of like look at it a certain way if you keep like going um hey, well, you know about cooking mr culinary degree over here <laughs> <laughs> but um so in a sense i've been kind of like digging for kind of meaning and the more i think about it the further it goes back like i i went to like a catholic school um in, in scotland and but sorry to hear that Oh, sorry. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> really, like I, my family wasn't especially like Catholic. It was more just kind of like heritage of the family that we went to the Catholic school, or whatever. So, but then it was when I was like maybe fourteen, fifteen that I started uh, like really looking into stuff for myself, and I came to the conclusion actually I was like, okay, the Bible is legit, but like I don't like any of this Catholicism stuff. And it was the same. It was the the Easter holiday, so we had like two weeks off school. And I spent the whole two weeks like on old school YouTube watching like documentaries and stuff like that about like the real bible and about like the end times philosophy and like the new world order and all this like illuminati stuff um so i really i, I kind of had all that as like a new package so i was like oh my god I've, I've taken like the glasses off you know and i actually the red I, pill man pretty much man uh, <laughs> i really like red pilled myself on youtube um as a you know as, as like a kind of like you know teenager 15 whatever um, and I found it really hard to relate to like the world after that, you know. So I, I kind of got this this kind of weird like view on on things. Um, and then eventually I kind of had to drop all that stuff because it was just like ruining my life, you know. Um, and I kind of dropped spirituality at the same time. Uh, and then I eventually kind of came back to it uh, when I was going through some depression. And then I went for like a Reiki session with a cousin of mine, um, whose name is Susie Berry, uh, and she's a healer. She works with the you right of Donna Eden. Donna Eden's like an energy healing system. Hmm. It's pretty cool, man. Like there's this whole thing, and uh, Susie, my cousin, was like studying and practice, like the whole thing. So I got like super cheap. Uh, I was like a guinea pig, you know, and I like was like writing up reports for all the sessions. So um, I came into it through that, and then I got like a cheap Reiki, um, and a friend of mine uh, was whose name is Martina, just name dropping all these people there. <laughs> but, uh, uh, part of the story. So. Uh, she did like a couple of like, hour reading for me and I was like, oh, this is really cool, you know, and didn't really think much of it, just just like chipping away, you know, but it was maybe about four years ago where I was like, you know, I, I think I actually want to like move this like to the center of my life, you know, and then from then on just like opened like all the stuff because I still had like a hangover 
uh, like kind of prejudice against some ideas, you know, against like the all seeing eye or about, you know, against, I don't know, like, you know, Freemasonry or something like that. And I was like, oh my God, I can't read, uh, you know, uh, you know, anyone who's associated with Freemasonry because, you know, they're evil or whatever. And then it kind of took me a while to just be like, okay, get to the point where I was happy just to go off the thing and just like open it up. And then, because I always had that kind of curiosity, even when, when I was a Christian, I was still just like, I really want to listen to there, you know, but it was because it was so, so curious, you know, and I think in a way like the tradition kind of like really enhances that curiosity because maybe it's something about like we all want to be like, bad or whatever, I don't know. But um, as soon as you like just indulge it, it feels like so satisfying. And, you know, I think maybe that's in a, in a sense kind of like what, what real curiosity, I've, I've like veered wildly off your, <laughs> off your question. You're all good. But yeah, pretty much like, you know, for, for a long time, it's been a continuous like kind of search, uh, you know, for for understanding it to, to various levels, you know, and um, it's all been kind of like leading up to, to this moment. And who knows, like in 10 years, you know, you know, maybe it'll be the cooking that I'll be doing instead of, you know, astrology or whatever. Maybe it'll just be a Christian pasture and you'll have uh, averted everything. And you'll kind of go the Doreen virtue route and say, curse everything <laughs> that you used to be about. <laughs> Um, the cooking thing is interesting because I, I read a book or I heard somebody say at one point that uh, all of these people started bringing all these texts like Taoist texts and Buddhist texts over and they started translating them and their whole concept was pretty much they wasted a bunch of time and energy to do it because if any book is read, any book read appropriately is a Taoist or Buddhist text really to where there's not really any need to translate anything because it's inherent in everything. And that's one of the things that I've definitely found on my own um, exploration of stuff is it's all relative to literally everything else. Um, and it doesn't matter if it's a principle that I've picked up in recovery. It applies to business. It applies to personal life. It applies to other things. Or it's if it's something that I've picked up in like web development or other things, it literally everything's kind of linked in some way once you get the proper perspective. Um, one other thing that I really got from what you said, I didn't realize you were so fucking young if you were 15 and like getting into YouTube, man. I didn't realize there was that big of an age gap from like between us. I'm 29. Um, not, not, not that much of a gap, is it? I thought YouTube didn't come out until 2006. Have I just lied? <laughs> you might have, man. Or maybe you were older than you thought. Maybe you were, maybe you were high. I don't, I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe, uh, I'm behind the times and it came out sooner. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Um, I definitely want to delve into kind of the YouTube rabbit hole a little bit, like in the next episode, because that's one of the things where I think curiosity can become somewhat perverted and become self-destructive. Um, there's something else in there. Oh, one of the things that I wanted to touch on too that you had brought up, I'm trying to think of how to phrase this appropriately because it's something that I really uh, have entertained a lot and I don't hear many people talking about it. Do you think that it's possible that part of the reason that Freemasonry is somewhat bastardized is as a way to prevent people from looking into it as a valid way of like help? Like in some ways it's almost kind of like in, in uh, some cultures they would have it where if you wanted to train under a person, they would tell them to wait outside. And although this is a horrible kind of analogy or metaphor, keeping people out by fear of it and keeping people ignorant of it by fear so they can actually do good things. Cause a good way to kind of not take credit for some good things that happen is make everybody think that you're an evil piece of shit. <laughs> um, well, that's interesting because if you look back, like, um, a hundred years ago, I mean, I'm sure anyone who's ever been in any kind of rabble, at some point you, you, you start, when you start questioning, like, you're brought up to believe, at some point you, you find out, like, what the Bilderberg group is, or, you know, who Alex Jones is, and you find out, that, like, you know, man, 11, et cetera, et cetera. Um, all that stuff, like, then, of course, you come across the fact that, like, oh, all these Freemasons were involved in, you know, in, in a million things, you know, like, super powerful group or whatever. Um, I think you can also uh, another one is the Theosophical Society, you know, and that's a thing in like kind of Christian conspiracy theories or whatever. That's like a huge one um, because you know they like liberally use the word like Lucifer and you know ISIS or whatever, just like all the time. You know? um, but both of these groups, like for me, it's a uh, it's it's like a kind of it's a way of doing things that was like a hundred years. Ago. It was like a 
club that was like kind of exclusive and it had this like particular goal and these like uh, ideas and everything that it wanted to like, plan and uh, you know include in in, uh, in society like it's going to grow like with society and through society and um, you know did a lot of great stuff you know like there's loads of loads of stuff in there that's really good but I think a lot of the you know, bad reputation they have comes from uh, you know the kind of like secret society thing that was undermining the church you know like in the renaissance you know that was like definitely a thing where it's like these guys are evil you know easiest way to if there's only one authority which it pretty much was in that day you know like the real authority in the church just if you're an enemy just be like he's evil and then everyone's just gonna believe it you know because they don't they literally have no other like you know source of information and yeah, group think well yeah of course you know and it's just like coming from from one guy uh so look at that and like why it's being maintained and i there is a possibility you know that the masons kind of just like don't do too much to like discourage that because it does act as like a kind of filter you know the whole thing about hidden knowledge you know it's not that or you know why we use the word like occultism it's not that this stuff is hidden in the sense that you can find it it's in the sense that like there are some barriers that like prevent you from from getting to it you know and a lot of that is like kind of what you alluded to with, with Taoism is like you can't just like glance at it and it's like aha I've got it you know it's not like a thing you can like Indiana Jones you know where it's like the Ark of the Covenant it's like a physical thing that you could just like smash and grab you know um, it's like a thing that you can only access it if you have like a certain frame of mind and that frame of mind requires like a certain amount of work um, but as far as like the masons like guarding that thing I think that it could be because I don't know in the world but in Scotland uh, masonry is really heavily linked to like Protestant church, which at this time, I know people who have joined the Masons and it's basically just, it's, <laughs> Glasgow in particular is like a kind of museum for like sectarianism from like 300 years ago or 200 years ago, whatever. It's pretty, pretty bad. Like it's all in secret shame as we call it. Here I am broadcasting to the world. But there's like, if you join the Masons in, in Glasgow in a big sense, it's just like a lot of people sitting around talking about how they don't like sense of football club and how much they love Rangers football club and just like just sitting there just being spiteful about like quote unquote like Catholics you know there's not a lot of like the great work or anything from anything I've heard and I know people who've like joined the Masons and just like this is boring but maybe like if you stick with it maybe that's like a filter you know it's like how much do you really want this you know and after a while they like let you in and they do the you know the, the great work you know I, I have no idea you know but uh, I can only go in there yeah, I mean, that's one of the things, like, I think that there is kind of like this this filter, this kind of like waiting room in some regard for it. Some of it definitely is cognitive, where there's cognitive barriers. I also think there's kind of cognitive uh, booby traps throughout the whole process where people can get stuck. Um, and then I also think that like the largest secret society is one that actually doesn't meet, doesn't have any direct interaction, but it really is kind of more psychically linked. But I think that like accessing that it does, does go down to what you kind of said is work. Um, and I think that a lot of the work is kind of veiled in things that are publicly available to everybody, but it kind of goes into how people understand it. Like tarot, for example, um, a lot of people think that it's simply like this divination system and it's just cards on paper that hold no real weight. But like the more I've delved into it, there's like a whole way of living your life and a whole way of understanding life events in there. And when you begin to, or when I begin to like filter my life experience through the cards and I like, I have it now where I do this thing where I'll put a card up on the background of my phone and then as I'm going through situations in my life, I wait until I kind of see the signs of transitioning to the energy of the next card. Mm -hmm. That's a fucking interesting way to live your life, dude. <laughs> like, I, I suggest trying it like if, if you've never done that before because it'll shift your perception of what you're looking at. Um, but looking at life through that lens rather than what is the fortune of this card like what is the archetype i'm supposed to be embodying while i'm in this stage of my experience it, it opens you up to new to new vistas that are like they're internal but it definitely changes the way that you relate to the external world um and i think that's like what the real occult thing is and like curiosity is big on that because one of the big failings, I, I was trying not to get into saying anything like this, but 
it is what it is. One of the big failings of a lot of the stuff nowadays is everybody claims they have this exquisite knowledge and they kind of lose that sense of curiosity and the fact that they think that they're tapped in and they have all these downloads they have to share <laughs> right now. And it's like, we're tapped into infinite wisdom. It's never, what can I do to clear my channel to refine this message more or to get like a deeper understanding? And I think that's a big fucking mistake. And that goes into one of the cognitive traps. Um, and Carlos Castaneda, this is the last thing I'll say on it. Carlos Castaneda, his four enemies to the man on the path of knowledge, the enemy number two was clarity. And I think a lot of people get fucking hung up on clarity and thinking that they see things so clearly that they can't question their own belief structure. Interesting. Well, do you know, I, I, I think a lot, of, well, that specifically, I, and I was going to say about the tarot thing, but it's like a really, like, great, anything like a, a daily card, you know, I did that for a while, you know, you pull the card at the, at the start or the end of the day, you know, and the point is that you take the time to like match it to what really happened, and it really deepens like your understanding of what the card means, but as you say, like really uh, digs into like, like uh, what, uh, what what's happening in your life, you know, when you, when you stop seeing an event as like something that's like happened, you know, to you, and it's like a, you know, a horrible, you know, this awful like event or whatever that needs like so, so much attention and everything. Of course, like it does, you know, uh, you know, my, my shower is broken today. You know, that's like a thing I need to sort out. But it's like, okay, what's the thing I'm, that I'm, what's like the the theme that like, works out in the, the bigger picture, you know? And like with the tarot, like really helps that. But as far as curiosity, I think that that's a really good exercise because especially when you're when you're like you know learning the, the tarot to begin with but there's going to be so much um curiosity and like wow like you know what is a hierophant what the hell does that word even mean <laughs> you know things like that and you're just like all this there's so much like that kind of leads you inside it you know, it's but the point is that for me it's that you need to like do that work you know it's you're you're being like led it's kind of like curiosity is like the fuel that, that drives like i don't know investigation that makes sense you um, should put that on a t-shirt right hold on there's something i need to say um you should download my my guided meditations <laughs> so, sorry that's an inside joke i don't know if people will get it. i don't even know if michael caught the uh the I, nod I, I, there Oh, I did. I did. <laughs> I, I, I feel that one. Uh, so in the, <laughs> well played. Good fun. <laughs> anyway, okay. anyway, so anyway, well, what is it? The Circle Jack Spiritual Spiritual Circle Jack Podcast. Um, anyway, well, that's pretty pretty much what it is. <laughs> really, for being honest. Anyway, um, it's okay, curiosity. What were we talking about? Um, people get caught in traps. Okay, so for me, it's like you get to, well, like I like I was saying before with like you know listening to Alex Jones like all the time, you know, it was like cool, um, you know, you get to a, a stage where like you think you like you see like through the bullshit, and you know you do, you know, you absolutely do, like you, well, you know, congratulations, but you you've reached like uh, you're like one step closer to seeing reality as it really is, which as I said earlier, you're never really going to see with these two eyes, you know. That could, yeah, it's physically you know, impossible. Oh, but physically, because like phys physical stuff isn't real, you know, like really, um, it's an, an experience, you know, a way of experiencing reality. But so, like, it's almost like you, it's totally fine. And I do this, and I think it's actually healthy. To, like, once you get to like a new kind of like uh, layer to like check it out, you know, like experience the whole thing, like push it, you know, see what's there, whatever. Um, but it's almost like for me, every time I'm always kind of looking for the door. To like to the next level you know what i mean and that's the reason that i like check it all out because i'm just like oh cool all this cool stuff and i like you know talk my girlfriend's ear off about like whatever i've been reading that week, whatever, you know and it's like you know it's really great to do that with her in particular because she like pokes holes in it you know and i always get really frustrated because i'm like no like you don't you don't understand you know but then i think about it i'm just like yeah she's right man and it's like bang like there's the door you know i i don't get it you know and um I, I love like, you know, listening to, to people, you know, um, you know, oh, I, you know, I just had this like thought or whatever, you know, I, you know, I wish I had like more time to like sit and listen to that stuff. But like really for me, it's like, that's really cool. You know, like what's next, you know, and in a sense, you know, that's kind of like, 
you know, maybe you know, maybe I'm not taking the time to like really appreciate like the the message. You know, maybe I should focus a little more. You know, instead of thinking like, like a next level or whatever. But uh, you know, that's that's you know, for me, that's what I always try and do. It's just like always like, what's next? What's next? What's next? You know, and I just try and uh, just I don't know, eat that up. Really. Yeah, I'm. I'm. That's one of the things that I kind of like about having like the tarot card on the back of my phone for like X amount of days. Sometimes it's been a couple weeks or whatever because it lets these messages filter in slower. And it's like, I'm not looking for the escape. Like this is fucking like now that I'm about to say what I'm about to say, I'm floored by it. I'm really becoming more patient with my search for everything. I don't know who's talking right now. Um, but like, I'm, I'm really like, letting kind of life life's experience wash up to me more so than seeking things out. And it's a whole different experience in how I'm learning to relate to everything. Um, because I don't think that actively pursuing creativity all the time is the answer either. Because if you really look at the concepts of yin or yang, you have to have the active and the passive principles of it. So mm -hmm. you might be skipping over stuff and I don't think you can ever, you can never skip over something if you're supposed to learn it, but you might not be savoring um, the level of understanding as much. So you might be shortchanging yourself, like getting at like a really high quality meal somewhere and then like being stoned and eating it with the munchies and like three bites and not tasting any of it. Right. <laughs> I mean, mean, plant medicine, sorry, being on plant medicine. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good analogy, man. That, that, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Oh, going back to cooking as well. I'm See, dude? Damn. <laughs> um, yeah, as far as, like, the positive side of everything, I think we really kind of hit the main concepts of it. Like, uh, to sum it up from my perspective, and I'll give you the final, final word, and you can walk us out on it. Um, curiosity can be very good. It's something that will allow you to explore things, get a richer experience of life. It'll open many doors, um, and it can be – a great catalyst for change and uh, enriching your life overall. You should put that on a t-shirt. Come here, it's all that. That's a <laughs> fucking mouthful, dude. I don't know about that. <laughs> mouthful, more cooking. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> anyway. Um, well, for me, just like curiosity, I think it's really healthy. Um, I, what was I said? I'm going to try and say that again. It was curiosity is the fuel that drives uh, exploration, which leads to experience. Uh, and you know, I think that that's like the you know, if, if you're intrigued by anything, just like follow that. You know, curiosity, I think, is like a kind of like the cosmic tap on your shoulder as well as like your intuition. Just like you know, oh, what's in there? You know, go and check it out. You don't lose anything, but you have the potential to, to like really like gain. So, curiosity for the win. Thanks for listening to the Spiritual Phoenix Podcast. If you've got a question you want answered, a topic you'd like discussed, or a guest you want to hear, check out the form in the show notes. Follow our social media for other great content.